Hello again and welcome to another chemistry lesson. We're looking at electrochemistry. Uh, specifically in this lesson, we're going to look at uh, galvanic cells. I'll tell you in a minute what that is. And uh, specifically in the galvanic cells, the zinc copper uh, galvanic cell. And, uh, and you'll understand when we get there. Anyway, a galvanic cell is a galvanic cell. cell is a electrochemical cell so electrochemical tells you that we are working with electricity and chemistry electrochemical cell where an electric current is produced from chemical reactions. Okay, and uh, an important thing here to note is that in a galvanic cell, chemical, chemical energy, in other words, the energy that exists inside compounds gets converted into electric energy. Okay, so let's go and look at the zinc copper cell and you'll understand what I mean. So imagine we have two, two electrodes. The one electrode is a copper electrode. Let's, let's take a red, I'm sure it will not be. Is a copper electrode and it is in a solution that has copper 2 plus uh, ions in it. Okay, in other words, copper cations. In another solution, we have zinc cations, zinc 2 plus, and so we also have a zinc electrode uh, in a electrolyte solution with zinc cations. Now, where did these cations come from? Well, something electrolyte was put into the solution, and electrolyte is just a salt a salt that ionizes when we put it into into water and the salt that we might have been might have used here is copper sulfate and the salt that we might have used here is uh, zinc sulfate they're common ones okay zinc sulfate was dissolved in here now the 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 two electrodes are connected with a external wire okay so some conductive materials used to connect them and we also have a this work we also have a voltmeter connected again I'm choosing terrible colors to write on each other there we go we're going using a voltmeter and this voltmeter would uh, read the difference of the joules per coulomb of energy uh, per coulomb of electrons at this point and at that point and our question would be what would this reading be okay well at this point the reading would be zero there would be no reading why not well it doesn't matter which one is attracting which the point is that these are reversible reactions the half reactions that occur at each uh, uh, electrode is a reversible reaction so the moment I get electrons from this copper uh, or from this system the electrons will be donated back because the solution becomes negatively charged and um, because it becomes negatively charged it repels the electrons again so the reversible reaction occurs almost immediately so that there's no exchange of electrons so before we can go any further we'll first need to donate more charge into the system and donate more charge into the system we don't know yet which one will be the positive and which one will be the negative but we know that um, one will be positive one will be negative and this is now called a salt 
bridge. So the salt bridge is the one, salt is a cation and an anion uh, compound and it will donate this into the system which will cause whichever one is attracting the cation, whichever one is attracting the anion, that will come from the salt bridge. Now we've got a complete circuit. Notice this, we've got a complete circuit and we will have a voltmeter reading. Our question is what will that voltmeter reading be? Without actually going to do this experiment, we could go to the table of standard standard reduction potentials. Now standard reduction potentials, we looked at in the previous video, is the ability of the ability that copper has to attract electrons compared to hydrogen. Hydrogen was our standard. The ability that zinc has to attract it, um, electrons based on a standard, in other words compared to uh, hydrogen. And here's the table. So here's a standard electrode potential in an aqueous uh, solution. Okay, so what this measures is the potential to reduce. What is its ability to reduce? Remember what reducing means? It means to attract electrons. Again, I hate that word, but that's what it means. Okay, so we'll see hydrogen. Where's hydrogen? Uh, hydrogen, where are you? Okay, do they have hydrogen in here? Yes, there we go. Okay, hydrogen's ability to attract electrons is zero. No, hydrogen's ability to attract electrons is not zero. Hydrogen's ability to, comp uh, to attract electrons from itself is zero. Okay, so we saw, we, we're using zinc, and we see zinc is negative, which means compared to hydrogen, zinc is weaker, zinc 2 plus, and the zinc 2 plus cation is weaker to attract electrons than hydrogen is. Okay, and then copper on the other end, copper 0.34 about here, okay there we go, copper is positive. Its ability to attract electrons is stronger than hydrogen. So that gives us sufficient information to go and see now in what direction will the electrons flow. The electrons the copper's attractive force of electrons would be stronger so copper will get electrons okay which means that zinc is going to have to donate electrons when zinc donates the electrons the electrode becomes positively charged and what that means is that the um from the electrode these positive charges will be donated into the electrolyte solution as more zinc 2 plus uh, cations so two electrons would be donated every two electrons donated donates one zinc cation in here so this is what happens at the uh, copper electrode is the copper 2 plus ion will get copper 2 plus iron will get two electrons and that will produce copper the element copper and because it's producing the element copper a layer of copper will start to form around here but because we've now received electrons there would be a bunch of s4 negatives in excess which means we will have a negative charge here which means from the salt bridge it will have to donate for me a cation because the cation that used to be here now had got an electron it's not a cation anymore it's now a neutral substance so we need to get something from the salt bridge so the salt, salt bridge can typically be something like sodium nitrate is a, is a good example and so sodium might be introduced in here and so now there's some sodium particles in here. Now on the other side what's happening, uh, sorry not sodium particles, sodium um, cations. Now on the other side what's happening is we used to have zinc. We started with zinc that donated electrons. So it's losing electrons, okay, and because it's losing electrons zinc becomes zinc 2 plus. 
okay and so zinc 2 plus is being donated into the system so now we've got an excess of zinc 2 plus electrons so this becomes positive so we need some um, something from the salt bridge to to offset that so now NO three negatives are being released they are already SO4s okay uh, anions in here now NO3 anions also released to offset this now it, it, there's various salt bridges that you could use don't worry about um, the specific one okay but this is what will happen in here so let's name our electrons we said before that uh, this is the electron flow electron are flowing from the zinc towards the copper and uh, and we just saw that by looking at that at our table and seeing which one what had the stronger pull the more positive it, it is the, the stronger it's pulling and uh, we saw that the electrons are therefore flowing towards the side the electrode from which electrons are flowing so the electrons are flowing from this half cell making this half cell the anode okay the electrons are flowing towards this one making this one the cathode now in electricity you might recall uh, if you've watched our electricity videos that in electricity the symbol for for a cell this whole thing is a chemical reaction that produces a current that's exactly what happens in a battery with that you go by and at, at a shop that's that's exactly what happens inside here is uh, something similar to this the whole setup is even similar to this and the the negative side in in a battery it's the one is this side that's the negative side and that's the positive side that's how it's named in our symbolic system this is what it looks like the long line is the positive side the other side is the negative side how these signs of positive and negative work it's the negative side is the is the side that is supplying the electrons okay so this this side is supplying electrons and that one is receiving the positive side is receiving the electrons so with that in mind we can see well that that mean makes the the anode the negative okay the negative pole and the cathode the positive pole and it makes very very much sense looks uh, look what we call an anode anion is a negative ion so an anode is the negative side the cation is the the, the positive ion and we call that a cathode so it all uh, does work together and uh, and now well let me stop that sentence there i don't know what i wanted to say anyway let's quickly identify what is the oxidation half reaction and what's the reduction half reaction it's so simple when you when, if you have this you have it and I mean you just you just see okay this one gets electrons that means it's being reduced okay it's the reduction half reaction that one is losing electrons means it is oxidized okay and uh, and I just want to show you something when something is being oxidized what's happening is it is releasing no, notice when I lose electrons I'm releasing cations what will happen to this bar what will happen to this bar if it's releasing it will erode it will erode okay while on this side we see that we will actually glaze this bar with more copper on this side the zinc will actually start to erode because it's losing ions into the system so for example rusting rusting is an oxidation reaction and and we know what happens to steel that is rusting it's eroding over time so uh, that's an important point and then the final thing i want to talk about is this reading on here what will the reading be on the voltmeter well it is very easy all we'll do is see is look at what is the difference the difference in standard 
reduction potential reduction potential you see and and let me just explain explain how is it that we can with uh, with using the standard reduction potential table where it compares it to hydrogen how can we then compare them to themselves and it's it's actually very easy I'm 31 years old now my mother is 51 years old so the difference in our ages is 20 years okay uh, my son is two years old now okay he's two years old now so the difference in our age is 29 years now what is can if we use me as a standard okay if we use me as a standard we can comp see the standard difference between my mother and I is 51 the standard difference between my son and I is is actually negative 29 now let's say these weren't known uh, let me wipe this out let's say these values weren't known all we knew was these two values now with these values you can't get the specific values themselves okay so we've got this value here okay this value here let's say XYZ XYZ we can't get these specific values using the differences between them but we can get if I know the difference between here and there the difference between here and there it's negative because I'm going backwards okay then I can get the difference between these two points by simply taking the difference between the differences in other words by taking 20 minus minus 29 I get 20 minus minus is positive is 49 remember my mom was 51 my son was 2 what's the difference in their age 49 and I didn't use the 2 in the and the 51 I used the differences between a central point and that's exactly what we will get in order to get the standard uh, the difference in the standard reduction potential we will use this formula and this formula will make 100% sense the standard reduction potential is uh, the symbol is it looks like this okay that is the this would be the voltmeter reading okay and this would be equal to the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode okay now, why specifically the cathode and the anode? It doesn't have to be the, the, the cathode or anode. All it is, it's the bigger value, bigger minus the smaller. So even if you do forget, what you're going to do is you're going to take the bigger value on the reduction potential table notice that they in this table it might be different in other tables but in this table they put from negative to positive so we'll use the the value that is lower down on this table just the more positive value we'll use first that would be the one that is has the the strongest ability to attract electrons in other words that would be the one to which the electrons are flowing in other words it would be the cathode that's why we use the cathode first it's the one with the biggest ability to attract the electrons so this value would be bigger the anode would be the one with a smaller ability to attract electrons now in our table for this specific one we'll literally would have looked at which one is the bigger we we look for copper 2 plus in this table where's copper 2 plus okay here we go copper 2 plus gets two electrons to become a copper solid that's the one so 0 comma 3 4 0 comma 3 4 minus the ability of of zinc where's zinc here we've got zinc 2 plus for it to gain two electrons to become zinc um, solid okay its reduction potential is negative 0 
What that just means is it's more likely that this 2 plus will actually go to the other side if we compare it to hydrogen, of course. So this one, and now it's so important, please don't forget this, it's negative 0, 0,76. So that now it actually becomes 0, 0,34 plus in the same way that my mother's difference was 20 minus minus 29 it actually becomes positive in that same sense it becomes positive here okay which makes it 1 comma 1 volt that would be the reading that we have here 1 comma 1 volt now I promised this was going to be the last uh, thing I mentioned but I lied I also just want to show you one more thing and that is cell notation cell notation sorry i did forget that so here's the standard format uh, the standard format would be um, what's happening at the anode the salt bridge is represented by two lines like that and what happens at the cathode Okay, now if I say what's happening at the anode, I also just need to show what is the anode made of. Okay, anode is made out of something uh, made of. Okay, and if the anode is made out of the same substance as the, uh, um, so here for example, we've got the the uh, anode is made out of copper, it's the solid part I mean, and the ions are copper then I don't need to specify what the anode is made of uh, but for example when we used when we looked at the hydrogen at the, uh, the hydrogen anode looked like this and hydrogen was pumped up in here pushing down the electrolyte in here so that there is uh, there is a connection between hydrogen the electrolyte and platinum so this one the electrode was made out of platinum and so we would have had platinum at there okay same thing with the cathode in the end at, at the other side I would just say what the cathode is made out of as well the, what the cathode made of if that's necessary in both of these the anode and the cathode is the same substance as the ion that is in the solution so what happens at the anode well at the anode since the anode is made out of the same thing the anode here is the zinc so here we have zinc okay and what happens to the zinc is it changes phase from zinc solid to zinc ions it's changed phase from zinc solid to zinc ions in an aqueous solution. When we change phase, we use one line. Then that's what's happening at the anode. We have our salt bridge represented by two lines like that. What happens at the cathode? Well, at the cathode, we have uh, copper ions becoming copper solid. So again, we've got copper ions becoming copper solid and that's it that's cell notation this represents everything that happens the order in this we know that this is the anode anode there's the cathode cathode we can see here what is happening we losing electrons so that means this is being reduced we can see here this one is gaining um so it is no c that's why i hate this word okay oh me this is not being reduced this is being oxidized this is oxidized oxidized because it is losing electrons it's being oxidized and this is being reduced because it's gaining electrons i'm sure this video is long enough now so let me let you go uh, thank you for watching i hope you understood what the galvanic cell is galvanic cell is 
uh, is an electrochemical cell where electric in a current is produced from a chemical reaction. This is the chemical half reactions that happen and as a result there is a flow of electrons in an outside circuit flowing through a voltmeter reading that we can get from taking the difference in the standard reduction potential tables. And uh, so go play around, see what will happen, what will the voltmeter reading be depending on what two electrodes you use and uh, the whole process is fairly simple, quite fun. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.